Prostate biopsy is something that all urologists are familiar with, yet uncertainty remains as to the safest and most efficacious way to perform the procedure. Currently, the majority of prostate biopsies are performed through the transrectal approach, though this is not without its downsides, both with respect to undersampling of the anterior gland and the risk of clinically significant infections. This latter point is becoming increasingly important with the rise of ESBLs, extended spectrum beta-lactamase resistant enterobacteria. These organisms are resistant to aminoglycosides, penicillins, and increasingly to fluoroquinolones, and as such are now often implicated in cases of trust sepsis. With the aging population and routine PSA testing, there is an increasing number of men undergoing biopsy to assess for cancer. There is also a rising use of active surveillance for low-risk disease, which calls for men diagnosed with prostate cancer to have repeated biopsies and thus be burdened with the cumulative risk of repeated exposures. In the present paper, we describe the extensive experience of transperineal biopsy at St Vincent's Hospital in Sydney, Australia, where it has been in use by Professor Stricker since 1996. This paper is the largest prospective series of transperineal biopsies reported to date and is compared with the largest series of reported trust biopsies and also the domestic audit performed by our professional body, the Urological Society of Australia and New Zealand. Reassuringly, our recorded infection rate was 0.2%, an order of magnitude less than that described to transrectal biopsy. By avoiding the rectum altogether, inadvertent inoculation with enteric flora is minimised. There were accordingly no clavian 3 and no clavian 5 complications. The safety implications for this are thus profound. Prostate cancer detection is also improved with transperineal biopsy. In a paper by Hossack et al. in 2012, our group compared it to truss biopsy. When it comes to anterior tumours, it was better at detecting them at a smaller size and lower grade. Transperineal biopsy is not a panacea, however, and we do recognise that it has its limitations. The logistical requirement for deep sedation or general anaesthesia requires the procedure to be performed in a day surgery centre or its equivalent. Nevertheless, many urologists consider it to be the preferred route in men with a prior negative biopsy but in whom there is a high index of suspicion. It is also a requirement for many of the developing minimally invasive techniques being proposed. Our study shows urologists can continue to use it reassured that they are operating within an acceptable safety profile. Lastly, the transperineal grid approach also lends itself to the developing MRI fusion algorithms with further benefits to be derived here in terms of accuracy, the number of biopsy cores required and speed of the procedure.